ஐஎம் மிஸ்டர் ஜான் அண்ட் ஐடி ப்ரொஃபஷனல் ஒன் டே ஹி ஃபோல் சிக் அண்ட் வென் டு நியர் பை ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் டாக்டர் எக்ஸாமின் ஹிம் அண்ட் டோல்ட் ஹி ஹாஸ் குட் சம் இன்ஃபெக்ஷன் ஹி வுட் ரிசீவ் ஐவி ஆன்டிபயோட்டிக் தெரப்பி ஃபார் தட் ஹி நீட்ஸ் அட்மிஷன் டாக்டர் ஆல்சோ ஆடேட் ஏ பிளட் கல்ச்சர் டெஸ்ட் ஜான் வென் டு லெபார்டரி அண்ட் என்கொயர்ட் வென் வில் ஹி கெட் த டெஸ்ட் ரிசல்ட் லேப் பீப்புள் டோல்ட் ஹி வில் கெட் த ரிசல்ட் இன் டூ டேஸ் ஜான் வாஸ் டிசப்பாயிண்டட் ஹி வென் பேக் டு டாக்டர் கல்ச்சர் ரிசல்ட் வில் பி கெட்டிங் ஓன்லி ஆஃப்டர் டூ டேஸ் அண்ட் ஹவ் வில் வி ஸ்டார்ட் ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் இஸ் இட் நெசரி டு டேக் கல்ச்சர் ஃபார் தட் டாக்டர் செட் டோன்ட் கெட் கன்ஃபியூஸ்ட் யூ ஹாவ் டு சென்ட் யுவர் கல்ச்சர் பிஃபோர் இனிஷியேட்டிங் ஆன்டிபயோட்டிக் தெராப்பி தென் ஓன்லி வி குட் ஃபைண்ட் த எக்ஸாக்ட் பேத்தஜன் அதர்வைஸ் இட் மே கெட் பயஸ்ட் நோ மேட்டர் இஃப் இட் டேக் டூ டேஸ் ஃபார் கல்ச்சர் அண்ட் சென்சிட்டிவிட்டி ரிசல்ட் வி கேன் ஸ்டார்ட் அவுட் தெராப்பி நவ் இட் செல்ஃப் செலெக்ஷன் அண்ட் இனிஷியேஷன் ஆஃப் ஆன்டிபயோட்டிக் வில் பி டன் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் சர்டன் பிரின்சிபிள்ஸ் தென் ஓன்லி வி கில் கெட் பெட்டர் அவுட் குட் அண்ட் ஒன்ஸ் கல்ச்சர் ரிசல்ட் இஸ் அவைலபிள் வி கேன் மேக் சேஞ்சஸ் இஃப் நீடட் ஜான் எக்ரீட் அண்ட் வென் பேக் டு லெபார்டரி கேவ் த கல்ச்சர் அண்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆன் தெராப்பி ஹாய் எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் டு டுடே செஷன் பிரின்சிபிள்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆன்டிபயோட்டிக் தெராப்பி வி கேன் ஹாவ் ஏ கியூ கிளான்ஸ் ஆன் பிரின்சிபிள்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆன்டிபயோட்டிக் செலெக்ஷன் எம்பிரிக்கல் தெராப்பி இன்டர்பிரிட்டேஷன் ஆஃப் கல்ச்சர் அண்ட் சென்சிட்டிவிட்டி ரிப்போர்ட் அண்ட் டெஃபினிட் தெராப்பி அண்ட் ஆல்சோ பிரின்சிபிள்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆன்டிபயோட்டிக் டோசிங் ஃபார்மோகோ கைனடிக் அண்ட் ஃபார்மோகோ டைனாமிக் பேராமீட்டர்ஸ் தெராப்பியூட்டிக் ட்ரக் மானிட்டரிங் அண்ட் ரீனல் டோஸ் மோடிஃபிகேஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் ஐ எம் டாக்டர் மாஹிரா மைதீன் ஃபார்ம்டி கிராஜுவேட் ஃப்ரம் அல்ஷிஃபா காலேஜ் ஆஃப் ஃபார்மசி கரண்ட்லி ஒர்க்கிங் எஸ் கிளினிக்கல் ஃபார்மசிஸ்ட் அட் தயா ஜெனரல் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் திருஷூர் பிஃபோர் கோயிங் டு த செஷன் வி கேன் ஜஸ்ட் சம்மரிஸ் அபவுட் மைக்ரோ ஆர்கானிசம்ஸ் மைக்ரோ ஆர்கானிசம்ஸ் ஆர் ஜென்ரலி டிவைடட் இன் டு கிராம் பாசிட்டிவ் அண்ட் கிராம் நெகட்டிவ் ஆர்கானிசம்ஸ் அண்ட் தே ஆர் சப் டிவைடட் இன் டு கிராம் பாசிட்டிவ் கோக்கை கிராம் பாசிட்டிவ் பாசில்லை கிராம் நெகட்டிவ் கோக்கை அண்ட் கிராம் நெகட்டிவ் பாசில்லை in which gram positive cocci and gram negative bacilli are the common pathogens gram positive cocci contains three major groups staphylococcus in which mssa and mrsa in enterococcus group enterococcus faecalis and enterococcus faecium in streptococcus group streptococcus pneumoniae and streptococcus pyogenes gram negative bacilli group contains e coli klebsiella pneumonia acinetobacter salmonella enterobacter burkholderia and pseudomonas as we discussed earlier always send appropriate cultures before antibiotic therapy then we can start on empirical therapy once cultural sensitivity report is available we can initiate definite therapy what is empirical therapy empirical therapy is the best guess it is the choice of treatment before culture result is available it's based on site etiology severity of illness local susceptibilities comorbidities ability to source control and previous antibiotic history why empirical therapy is important for each hour delay in starting empirical therapy mortality rate will increase with 10 percentage also time is critical get dose right from the beginning we can't give the same empirical therapy for all patients for that we stratify patients according to risk factors type 1 patients in case of community acquired infections they have no contact with healthcare system no prior antibiotic treatment in last 90 days no procedures done and they are young patients with few comorbidities type 2 category hospital acquired infections they have contact with healthcare system recent hospital admission without or minimal invasive procedures antibiotic therapy in last 90 days and minimum procedures done patient age greater than 65 years with few comorbidities and in type 3 category they have hospitalization greater than 5 days or infections following invasive procedures 
they have received recent multiple antibiotic therapies and have done major invasive procedures within last 60 days also patient with multiple comorbidities conditions for example cystic fibrosis aids neutropenia and other immunodeficiency diseases for example if the patient is having pneumonia and he is a type 1 that is community acquired infection he is a type 1 patient with no risk of multi drug resistant gram negative bacteria we can start with amoxicillin clavulanate or ceftriaxone plus azithromycin or fluoroquinolone if he is a type 2 patient that is risk of multi drug resistant gram negative bacteria but not acinetobacter or pseudomonas we can start with piperacillin tazobacter or cefepirazone salbacter plus azithromycin or clarithromycin if he is a type 3 patient with multi drug resistant or xdr include pseudomonas and acinetobacter we can start with imipenem or meropenem plus or minus colistin another scenario if the patient is have type 1 meningoencephalitis we can start with ceftriaxone plus doxycycline if the patient is of type 2 category we can start with meropenem plus vancomycin if the patient is of type 3 category we can start with meropenem plus vancomycin plus or minus intrathecal colistin okay once we have started empirical therapy after two days we will get the culture report again we have to go through it and determine whether our choice of antibiotic is correct or we need any escalation or de escalation so how can we interpret a culture and sensitivity report before interpreting a culture and sensitivity report we should know what it tells you and what it does not tell you it identify the bacteria or fungus present most of the times and the sensitivity result based on lab data but it does not tells whether it is an infection colonization or contamination and does not tell you which antibiotic to use always keep in mind susceptibility testing is an in vitro phenomenon and does not necessarily reflect or predict in vivo efficacy susceptibility testing is subject to greater variability depending on pathogen tested media used conditions of incubation and method of assessing bacterial growth the susceptibility of an organism to an antibiotic is determined by the mic value mic the minimum inhibitory concentration what it means minimum concentration of an antibiotic needed to inhibit visible growth of a single isolate of an organism and it is important for the definite treatment of an individual patient and break point an antibiotic break point is the dilution where bacteria begin to show resistance susceptibility labels attaches to most lab reports are based on mic break points susceptible means mic less than break point intermediate may be effective at higher doses or if antimicrobial concentrates at tissue site and resistant if mic greater than break point the break point and range of dilutions differ by drug and bacterial species therefore comparing mics of different antibiotics is not based solely on the numerical value but on how far the mic is from the break point and the site of infection and other considerations for example A strain of E. coli has a mic of 2 microgram per ml for amoxicillin and also for cefovirin. Amoxicillin is 4 dilutions away from its break point, while cefovirin is only 2 dilutions away from its break point.
Therefore, in this case, the E. coli strain is more susceptible to amoxicillin. Which antibiotic should we use? Look at the culture report. The blood culture yield Enterococcus faecalis. And the sensitive antibiotics are ampicillin, daptomycin, penicillin and vancomycin. We have certain rules to find out which antibiotic should be used. Rule 1. Always start with a beta lactam if possible. Exception includes atypical infections. Rule 2. Do not compare emesis between drugs. When selecting an antibiotic, keep in mind that factors in addition to MIC are important. The location of the infection is important because lipid soluble drugs reach higher levels in the tissue than they do in serum. Drugs excreted by kidney may reach higher concentration in bladder and also some drugs are more effective against gram negative bacteria than gram positive bacteria and vice versa. Species considerations are also important because certain antibiotics are toxic in some species. Rule 3. If less than or equal to, you can use the drug. But not the exceptions below. If the drug doesn't get to the site of action, if drug doesn't achieve the, its goal pharmacodynamic parameters, drug does not have inducible resistance, drug may have intrinsic resistance and patient specific factors, drug cost, etc. For example, uh, for enterococcus species, cephalosporins are intrinsically resistant. And the final one, rule 4. Microbiology always have more information than what is reported. They may have results before they are reported in the computer. So, in the assessment question, which antibiotic should we use? Okay, let us see. Always start with the beta lactam if possible. The drug of choice for ambicillin sensitive enterococcus is ambicillin. And rule 2. Do not compare MACs between drugs. Daptomycin is not better than ambicillin because the MAC is lower. Ambicillin is still the drug of choice if sensitive. And rule 3. If less than or equal to, you can use the drug with some exceptions. True. Cost effectiveness ambicillin greater than vancomycin greater than daptomycin. Susceptibility patterns will vary in different clinical areas. And rule number 4. Microbiology always has more information than what is reported. Microbiology also tests linosolid, which is the only oral option for treatment in bacteremia. But still, ambicillin is preferred. So, the answer is ambicillin 2 gram IV Q4 hourly. Let us see another scenario. The urine culture yield Klebsiella oxytoca ESPL. So, the sensitive antibiotics are cefotite, levofloxacin, meropinum, nitrofurantoin, and TG-cycline. Piperacillin tazobactam is intermediate resistant. So, which antibiotic should we use? We need more information. Either it is cystitis or pyelonephritis. If cystitis, is it a male or female? If female, how old? Let us assume this is cystitis in a young adult female with no comorbid conditions. Do you want IV or peroral? Of course, peroral. So let us start with the rules. Rule 1. Always start with a beta lactam if possible. Cephotitin and meropinum are the only sensitive beta lactams. Rule 2. Do not compare NMACs between drugs. Rule 3. If less than or equal to, you can use the drug with some exceptions. 
exception sir sephotidin should not be used for esbl producing organism and is iv meropenem is appropriate but it is iv ciprofloxacin is resistant so levofloxacin should not be used digicycline has poor urine penetration and is also iv so the oral option which is sensitive is nitrofurantoin rule 4 microbiology has more information than what is reported phosphomycin can be tested but it is expensive so the answer is nitrofurantoin 100 mg bd into 5 days so all in a nutshell there is always more to be evaluation than just an s use a beta lactam if at all possible never use the smallest number just because it is the smallest number and know the exceptions after interpreting the culture and sensitivity report we can change the choice of antibiotic if needed if the results shows the given antibiotic is resistant to the organism we can accelerate to an higher option if any lower antibiotic is available we can deescalate to that one so far we have discussed how to choose an antibiotic once appropriate empiric or definite antibiotic has been selected the selection occurs so the aims of antibiotic dosing are to maximize rate and extent of bacterial kill minimize possibility of drug toxicity and minimize the development of antibacterial resistance can we rely on a single dosing regimen for complex patients of course no the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic factors varies from individual to individual what are the sources of pharmacokinetic variability hyperdynamic or increased cardiac output increased clearance or decreased plasma concentration altered fluid balance their spacing or altered protein binding there might be increased volume of distribution and decreased plasma concentration if there is no organ dysfunction and changed volume of distribution and clearance and normal plasma concentration if renal or hepatic dysfunction is present increased volume of distribution decreased clearance and increased plasma concentration organ support rrt or ecmo increased volume of distribution and unknown clearance so there might be unpredictable plasma concentration if dosing does not account for these changes there might be suboptimal therapy and suboptimal patient outcome according to pharmacodynamic characteristics antibiotics can be classified into three concentration dependent antibiotics time dependent antibiotics and auc dependent antibiotics look at the graph for concentration dependent antibiotics higher the concentration maximum will be the kill for example in case of aminoglycosides single dosing is preferred than multiple dosing for example amikacin 1 g od is preferred than amikacin 500 mg pd but in case of time dependent antibiotics for example beta lactam so the concentration might be greater than mac and how long the great how long the antibiotics is present in the body the extent of killing will be increased so we must prefer multiple dosing bd or tad or qid dosing susceptibility patterns will varies in different clinical areas for example meropenem mac is 8 times higher in icus so we need higher doses to achieve the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic targets hence we have to find more options for more accurate therapy so here are some interventions 
first one the unit level interventions that is prolonged infusions for time dependent antibiotics and extended dosing interval for concentration dependent antibiotics second one is individualization of dosing efficacy at the site of infection weight based loading doses and creatinine clearance based dosing of renally cleared drugs and the third and most important one is therapeutic drug monitoring any drug with an assay available so for unit level interventions infusions are of three type intermittent infusions that is over 30 minutes to 1 hour continuous infusions that is over 24 hours and the third one is extended or prolonged infusions over 3 to 4 hours most of the time continuous infusion is not a practical option so in case of beta lactams we have to think about prolonged or extended infusion so our goals are to maintain the concentration above the mac and to increase the time the antibiotic is in contact with that of organism so always remember the loading dose that is the first dose should be an intermittent infusion so then only the concentration will be greater than the mac then the following subsequent infusions will be of prolonged time which might be 3 to 4 hours long for example meropenem 2 g the start dose 2 g should be administered over 30 minutes then only the concentration will be greater than the mac then the subsequent doses 1 g tad each dose should be administered over 3 hours that is prolonging the infusion but always keep in mind the stability of product should be considered by prolonging infusions in case of concentration dependent antibiotics extending frequency is important for example amikacin 750 mg od over 1 hour is preferred than amikacin bd dosing another important point to be considered is efficacy at the site of infection antimicrobial concentration attained at some site that is ocular fluid csf at cavity prostate and bone are much lower than the serum levels for example first and second generation cephalosporins and macrolides do not cross the blood brain barrier so they are not recommended for cns infections fluoroquinolones achieve high concentrations in the prostate and are preferred oral agent for the treatment of prostatitis daptomycin an excellent bactericidal agent against gram positive bacteria but it is not useful for the treatment of pneumonia because it is inactivated by lung surfactant many antibiotics for example aminoglycosides are less, less active in the low oxygen low ph and high protein environment of abscesses so they are not recommended agents in the same class can differ from one another for example moxifloxacin it does not achieve significant urinary concentration because of its low renal excretion and therefore it is not suitable for the treatment of UTIs in contrast both levofloxacin and ciprofloxacin are excellent choices for UTIs also the presence of foreign bodies at the site of infections also affects the antimicrobial activity the third and the most important option for more accurate therapy is tdm that is therapeutic drug monitoring it refers to measuring the specific drug at specific intervals to maintain a constant concentration in patient's blood stream therapeutic drug monitoring is mostly done for drugs with narrow therapeutic index that is small changes in drug exposure can result in toxicity for example in aminoglycosides and or loss of efficacy that is for vancomycin what are the scenarios to apply tdm if there is a narrow line between the efficacy and toxicity uncertain pharmacokinetic parameters decreased susceptibilities and different target exposure 
that is in case of deep seated infections for example in case of vancomycin under dosing of vancomycin contributes to antibiotic resistant and ineffective treatment overdosing of vancomycin is associated with nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity so optimizing vancomycin therapy is widely recommended by therapeutic drug monitoring trough concentration measurement is the appropriate and the most practical method to monitor vancomycin dosing The usual adult dose of vancomycin is 15 to 20 mg per kg per dose every 8 to 12 hours. In complicated infections or in seriously ill patients, a loading dose of 25 to 30 mg per kg based on actual body weight may be used to rapidly achieve target concentrations. not if mac is less than 0.5 we have to maintain the serum trough concentration about 10 microgram per ml to avoid resistance if mac is less than 1 we have to maintain the trough concentration greater than 15 microgram per ml For serious infections endocarditis osteomyelitis bacteremia meningitis and hospital acquired infection caused by methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus the vancomycin serum trough concentration should be greater than 15 to 20 microgram per ml then only there may be penetration and improved clinical outcome when we use tdm if the patient receives aggressive dosing to achieve trough levels and all patients at high risk of nephrotoxicity patients with unstable renal functions or patients on renal replacement therapy and patient receiving prolonged courses of therapy 3 to 5 days and what is the frequency of monitoring patients on prolonged courses exceeding 3 to 5 days should have at least one trough level just before the fourth dose always remember just before the fourth dose once we do monitoring for hemodynamically stable patients more frequent or daily trough monitoring for hemodynamically unstable patients how tdm of vancomycin in hemodialysis patient is performed should not measure within 6 hours after dialysis It may overestimate the steady state level due to serum concentration rebound following dialysis session. Look at the example. The organism identified is Staphylococcus aureus and vancomycin MAC value less than 0.5 T sensitive. The doctor initiated the treatment by 1 gram BD dosing. Patient was started on injection vancomycin 1 gram and just prior to the fourth dose the TDM was performed and we obtained the data the result was 6.1 microgram per ml our MAC was less than 0.5 so the target serum trough concentration should be greater than 10 microgram per ml we didn't get that value it is less than 10 that is 6.1 microgram per ml Again, the dose get increased to one point five gram BD, and TDM was performed. Then the result was sixteen point two microgram per ml, and we achieved the goal. Another important point for optimizing and individualization of antibiotic therapy is renal dosing considerations. This is done by Cockcroft-Gold formula for estimating creatinine clearance. So the creatinine clearance is 140 minus H into lead body weight in kilogram divided by serum creatinine into 72, and into 0.85 if female. Many applications are now available to calculate the renal dosing by Cockcroft-Gold equation.
dose of meropenem for female patient with age of 72 years and who weighs 65 kg and have serum concentration of 2.4 mg per deciliter. According to Cockroft Gold equation, we will get the clearance as 21.74 ml per minute. So, the recommended dose of meropenem for a creatinine clearance of 21 ml per minute is 250 to 500 mg 12th hourly. We should also consider the urine output, the amount of urine output of the patient. In case of time dependent antibiotics which requires a renal dose modification, always try to give multiple dosing. For example, in case of piperacillin tazobactam, 2.25 gram TID is preferred over 4.5 DD. So the T will be greater than MIC. Here are some examples of antibiotics which not need renal dose adjustments. Example, ceftriaxone, clintamycin, TG cycline, linazolid, moxifloxacin, azithromycin, etc. So far, we have discussed the principles of antibiotic selection and the principles of antibiotic dosing. Hope you all enjoyed the session. Any questions? Please find me at Thank you all for the patient listening.